Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Futures with me, Anthony Crudelli. On today's show, I'll be speaking with the President and Chief Technical Analyst at thetradingbook.com, Anne-Marie Band, craniosacral therapist, Emily Click, trader and performance coach, Dan Hodgman, and last but not least, futures trader, Danny Sitlow. Welcome to Trading Futures. All right, everybody, we're going to jump right into it today with Anne-Marie at the charts. Anne-Marie, you told me good trades need catalysts for setups. Talk to us about this. That's really true. You know, you and I are both technicians, and one of the things that we have a tendency to do is just rely on those technical indicators. And very often, for a trade to really take off and hold, it does need a catalyst. And so for me, as I step into those trades that have a longer time frame associated with them, I will start to look for catalysts, and I would look for them on a fundamental space to see what else is going on in the markets in terms of sector rotation, in terms of spaces that show that charts are basing and going out to find news that finds out why they're not selling any lower. Yeah, you said it right on right out of the gates. You and I, we are definitely more technicians. And something that you and I have discussed on the podcast and in our own conversations is that over the past few years, we've had to get more involved in the fundamentals. We have to know underlying themes that are happening in the markets because the technicals aren't going to get us uh, into some all into that many great trades without knowing these themes. That's exactly right. And when they whipsaw. If we understand the big catalysts, we'll understand that we're able to re-enter the trade and our thesis isn't broken. And that really is a key thing. As a trader, you can hold much greater conviction over your trade if you understand the catalysts that are running from a fundamental perspective. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I've learned for someone who's been primarily a technical trader is when I get a fundamental theme that's working with technicals, I tend to oh, hold that trade a little bit longer. Absolutely. And it works well, and you don't have to second guess yourself as much. And that really takes a little bit of a shift mentally for the technical trader because a lot of technicians go, I don't need the fundamentals. It's just noise, it's just opinion. And that might be true, but focus on data. When you think about what a catalyst is, consider data to be the real catalyst and not someone's opinion. You know, what really makes a catalyst? Is it just someone's opinion? Is it just a run in the market? No, it's something that's deeper and anchored into the structure of the economy of the market itself and how things are moving around. Absolutely. And here's something that you were talking about the other day with me was sector rotation and inflation upticks bring beaten down instruments into view. Talk and this that. is really ideal. We've got this data from Hedgeye. Hedgeye is, of course, one of my favorite places to go for good, solid data. And they've been showing an uptick in inflation. And so when inflation has an uptick, one of the things that we normally see are energies and commodities sort of take a rise as well. And really, those two elements right now are tremendously beaten down, and they've been trying to base. So they've been basing while this data has been flattening out and beginning to uptick. Those two things come together. They create a great catalyst for trade preparation, execution, and continuation. Absolutely. Like I said just a few moments ago, when you have a fundamental theme working with your technicals, so you're a great technician and you're going to hedge eye for to understanding a macro theme, when they're working together, you are more you're more clear as to which side you want to be more aggressive on. And that and, really and, matters. Yeah, yes. and, and which side you want to be less yeah, aggressive on. absolutely. That right. matters a lot. So hang tight. You ready to look at some charts and show us how you're absolutely. trading? Absolutely. Okay. All right, everybody. Next up, we're going to be talking about how Anne-Marie is currently trading crude oil. Stay tuned. This is my headquarters. This is where I trade and manage my portfolio. Since I added futures, I have access to the oil markets and gold markets. Okay. I'm plugged into equities. Trade confirmed. And I have global access 
meaning I can do what I need to do. Then, I can focus on what I want to do. Visit your online broker today to learn more. Welcome back, everybody. One quick point I want to make before I get back to Anne-Marie. In the last segment, I talked about how fundamentals help me as a technical trader stay in trades. It also helps me stay out of some bad ones. Exactly. Right? I think that's such an important part of trading, right, is when you have your strategy, find ways to keep you out of trades. I've learned that for me in my trading, I need confirmation and fundamentals definitely over the past few years have been great confirmation to get me into trades or to keep me out of trades. I want to be kept out of trades because I want to be in more of what's working and less of what's not. So I just want to start off and maybe see what, what you think about that as well. You know, that's true. And especially as technicians that spend a lot of time at the charts, we feel the need to trade. And that's not always the best case. And on top of that, if we get a bit of news that sends a stock well into a support level, but that news is fundamentally bad, we need to step away from our technicals and go, wait a second, just because that support doesn't mean it's going to hold. And so those two things coming together, I can't stress more how much that's changed my own trading over the last three to four years, really focusing on, okay, do the fundamentals and the real events happening in these instruments, are they really supporting my thesis that I'm building technically? Yeah, great traders don't force trades, they're forced to trade. That's exactly right. So we left off here, Anne-Marie. What are you trading with this uh, sector data that you've been getting from Hedgeye? Well, because of the inflation uptick, the things that I wanted to look at were the beaten down stocks that would move in an inflation cycle. And Hedgeye talks about something called quad three, and we're right now in between a quad two and a quad three, but... This means that we start looking at oil and we start looking at other commodities. And so I started looking at oil with a look to see, wait a second, if inflation is on the uptick, that means that oil ought to base, it ought to move up, and when it moves up, it ought to hold. And so that's really what brought me to look at the charts and say, all right, if it's gonna hold, where is the deepest area that I can engage at a support level? All right, well, let's go to the charts. We talked about you being a technician. The first indicator we're going to be looking at is moving average adaptive. And then here are the settings. Talk to us about these settings and why you chose them. Well, I love the adaptive moving average. And it's, an, it's a unique average because it brings a number of averages together. And that efficiency ratio, you'll normally see it as a 10. And what it does is smoothen things out a little bit too much. So I'd say try it at one. And if it's too noisy for you, then you can increase it a little bit. But the goal is to tell you what the price action is doing, not necessarily, hey, when it hits this average, do this. And so for me, it gives us a little bit more of that overall flavor of what's happening. Are we in a bullish environment? Is it naturally grinding up? Are we in a bearish environment? Is it naturally grinding down? Or is it moving sideways, undulating, and so we know we can trade within a range? Well, let's take a look at your first chart uh, on TradeStation. I pulled up crude on a daily with that adaptive moving average. What are you seeing here? Well, to note exactly what I was talking about, when this adaptive has got good solid slope, when it breaks, the first thing you're going to look for is a hold of those levels. What I like to say is take a look at your chart, and if it fails to head lower you're looking at an upshot and that last low edge is going to give you support zones. Over where we are right now, it's a bit of a mess. And so if you look at it and you were saying, if you were trying to explain this to someone who knew nothing about the markets, you literally could draw a line across the horizon here and about 70% of these bars would get covered. So this naturally tells us, listen, we're holding a floor but we've got a ceiling. And so if we want to engage before that uptick, 
we've got to look for where that floor is going to engage. And since we've stayed up above the adaptive for a number of days, we're now looking at a region that's really pretty rock solid. And that is what I am looking at in terms of entry. So the last entry I actually took was 5580. And that happened just a couple of days ago when it dipped down and then it held. But I got out right where the resistance is. And the reason that I did is because the adaptive average is really telling us we don't have real momentum. And until that takes off and starts running away with the first dip, so what it'll do is it'll move sideways like that. When it starts lifting, price action will dip. That way value buyers will come in. They'll wash out the sellers who are trying to move further down and they're gonna try and get it down, but the buyers are gonna hold the edge. And once it gets up into that zone, you can trade it until your price action starts giving you what I like to call an S-curve test but that's a failure frontline support here that becomes resistance. And so that S curve, it's present everywhere at the end of a cycle. And so sometimes it'll be deep, but sometimes it'll be shallow like this and give us a great shot. We're at the very beginning of this motion. If it holds, it looks a little like this formation, to be very honest. See the two peaks? Right yep. there oh, yeah, and over there, yeah. So that's what we're looking for. You know, for me, I say it all the time, I'm a caveman when it comes to trading because I just look at the pictures and the pictures from a technical space tell me, all right, go investigate this. But I try not to overcomplicate things. Yep. And really, if you just look at the pictures and then build from that fundamental thesis what's going on, you'll be able to do a lot and you'll have your risk events much lower because you're seeing a broad perspective of what's going to happen to price overall. Very basic, but very efficient. Exactly. Right? That's what I'm always looking for. Same here. Fundamental theme, you go to your adaptive moving average on a daily chart. So this gives you your mindset, Yes. right? So you're coming in to the day because you're a day and swing trader, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I'm more inclined to be buying dips aggressively in crude versus selling rallies. Yes. Doesn't mean you won't, but that's just That's exactly what, you're what it's at. saying. Yeah. Now, show us a little bit about this time frame. This is now the, the crude oil on the 30 minute. Is this a time frame that you're trading more actively on versus the daily? Is the daily just a setup? Talk to us about what you're doing here. All right, so the first thing that I do with a chart is get to these big levels that I can see on the daily because big money moves in big time frames. And so they'll come down and they'll give us a line in the sand for where things are going. What happens to us is we sit down and we plan our strategy and we work through every piece and we say, okay, this is where I'm going to get in. This is where my stop is and I'm going to move forward and so on and so forth. And the first thing that happens is you get stopped out and then you get into second guessing mode that says, wait a second, was I even right? Did I even know what was going on here? And so on and so forth. So for me, when you look at things from a big perspective, and your stop gets broken. Let's say I looked at this and I said, all right, I know what this is supposed to do is give me a little S curve. So it's supposed to come here and hold this zone. And so let's say I make my stop too tight and I put it right here and it comes and it gets me right there. My head is going to be first thinking, wow, was I wrong? But see, on a 30 minute chart, if you get one down tick and it immediately begins to recover, it does not affect the daily and weekly landscape, nor does it affect the fundamental notions of what's going on. So because you've got that rock solid information base that you're building your strategy from, you can say, wait, I can get back in after it comes back down and holds it again. So you just, instead of saying, oh, you know, that didn't work this time. Now I'm going to try to go short because that broke down. You keep the big picture event. You realize that from low 
to high, you're still trending up, and you look for that S, and you wait for it to do it again, and you get yourself re-engaged. As a trader, the number one thing that I still do, a great weakness of mine, is second guess myself. And moving to very big time frames have really curbed that. And it's allowed me to say, wait, one 30 minute downtick that immediately recovers, my thesis is intact. So that was operator error. And I just need to reset and do it again. I have my same supports. I watch for it to hold. And it takes me up into my next resistance zone. And really, I'm that mouse that comes out and gets a small piece of cheese and heads back because this market can be very, very dangerous. So a lot of what you're saying to me comes from preparation. Absolutely. Preparation is the foundation of your trading. Your fundamental homework, your big picture homework, and like you said, you get stopped out and all of a sudden traders going, you know what, maybe not now, I should be short. You start second guessing yourself. But if you lean on your homework, yes. you lean on your preparation, you have opportunities down the road. And I think that's just so important. That's why I always say preparation, anticipation, execution. Without the beginning, part of preparation, you have Absolutely. nothing. You can't do the rest. And you know, without that also, you have a tendency to end up trading on tilt. Yep. You'll really end up moving back and forth and not just saying, wait a second, just because I got stopped out, that doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Now, what happens really to the traders, they over lever. And when they get stopped out, then they're in a crisis mode that says, okay, I'm near my daily limit for being down. And so, you know, less is more. And every year that I'm in this business, <laughs> I, I've realized that when I'm trading less, I have a stronger hand in the market. Yes, And absolutely. I've had a lot of weak hands in earlier. <laughs> yeah, as as a that's for a different show yes. and a different conversation. Great stuff today. Thank you so much for joining my me. My pleasure. Next up, we will hear from Dan Hodgman with Top Steps Moment of the Week. Stay tuned. Why trade with TradeStation? It's innovative, easy to use, and totally freaking sweet. With powerful tools to track and execute your trades and low per trade commissions on stocks, futures, and options. Upgrade your trade at TradeStation.com. Why trade futures with TradeStation? You can trade over 80 products from home, work, or on the go with a powerful, easy to use interface and prices that let you focus on padding your wallet, not emptying it. Upgrade your trade at tradestation.com. Welcome back everybody. I'm now joined by Dan Hodgman. Dan, what's Top Steps moment of the week? Anthony, really excited. So today we're gonna to talk about one of our funded traders, Karen from Florida. He was able to take a uh, small intraday short in a trend up market. And so right now we're looking at the S&P 500 here. As you can see, you only have to take one look at this thing to know this thing is working its way upwards. Good news for this market, really, really likes to keep stepping up slow and steady. But there's so many opportunities when a market makes a new high to look for a little bit of a pullback. And a lot of times we're talking about maybe being long in those pullbacks. We want to find our long at the bottom of that. Well, today, uh, Karen looks for a short in that pullback, just taking it down to a short time frame level. And so this is a Monday trade. You hear a lot of people talking about Mondays, take it a little bit slower. You're getting back from the weekend, wait for uh, to test the water, get a little bit more comfortable. And that's exactly what we have going on here. So as we look a little bit closer here to the 30 minute chart, we see that once this market opened up, that overnight session really worked its way higher, just continued to push higher and higher until it essentially opened up. Once the market opened up, we started to find some resistance. And that's exactly what uh, Karen here is looking for. He finds a level, um, this market found resistance, sees one pullback, says, okay, it's starting to pull back a little bit. And as we look a little bit closer here, here's this where he found his opportunities. The market pushed back higher. And as you can see, just visual, these markets are so visual. He finds some resistance up above, says, look, I'm gonna look for this market to work its way back towards this trend line, break that trend, and find that support level that he defined prior to this trade. So he defines this level, takes a short up here at 3078 half, and only runs it for four points down to 3074 half, and his stop was gonna be right up at 3080. Few questions, first of all, fading and uptrend. Tough. It's tough, right? I mean, I, I always start with the dailies and the weeklies myself because I want to see what the primary trend is. So mm -hmm. I know when I'm going against it that I'm typically going to trade a little bit smaller. So my first question is, is this typical position sizing for? Yes. 
One contract, it was a Monday, did not want to start his week off in a tough spot knowing he's got four more days to trade ahead of him. So don't get aggressive going against the trend. Exactly. <laughs> don't recommend that. And I'm just curious why Karam got in before the uptrend broke. So he's taking a chance. It was one of those trades that he basically, he took a couple different opportunities throughout the day, was already doing pretty well throughout the day. And to me, this one, he was taking a chance saying, look, I do believe that this market can break down below that trend line because he was keeping his risk tight enough. He took the chance, last trade of the day, said, look, wrong or right, let's take the chance and go for it. Yeah, well, the one thing I do like about the trade is weighted for an opportunity, didn't force it, kind of let the day set up, exactly. saw some resistance happening. And if you're gonna take chances against the trend, you gotta be small, and I think you gotta have a tight stop. How, how wide was the stop again? Just two points. So two points for four. Simple one to two risk reward versus reward ratio there. Um, and again, it's a $200 trade. A lot of times we're talking about, we're looking for those bigger opportunities, but it's important to recognize throughout these intraday, op there's a lot of intraday opportunities to just kind of continue to chip away those little singles. We all, we've all heard about it. A little bit of a single here, a little bit of a single there, you'll start to build up pretty nicely. Yeah, good stuff. So a couple lessons in execution this week. Keep it small and fighting that trend. <laughs> I mean, you got to be cautious there. Uh, know when you're getting out. He knew exactly where he wanted to be out. Wasn't going to look for it to come all the way back to settlement. Was just trying to make a couple points, a couple hundred dollars to continue to pad that P&L. Um, like I said, it was a Monday. Mondays are days just to take a little bit slow. We just got back from a long weekend. You got to get back into things knowing that you still have four more days of trading ahead of you. And I, I think this speaks for itself. Small wins are still wins. Yeah, as someone who's scalped against the trend many a times in my career, this is the most important thing to me. Keep it small when going against that primary trend. Know where you're getting out and respect that stop and get out when it gets there. Absolutely. Good stuff this week, Dan. Thank you. All right, everybody. Next up, Danny Sitlow will tell us what's on our radar using Wuzzable. Stay tuned. This is my headquarters. This is where I trade and manage my portfolio. Since I added futures, I have access to the oil markets and gold markets. Okay. I'm plugged into equities, trade confirmed. And I have global access 24 seven, meaning I can do what I need to do. Then I can focus on what I wanna do. Visit your online broker today to learn more. Welcome back everybody. I'm now joined by Danny Sitlow. Danny, what's on your radar? Hi, Anne. So today I have a momentum strategy in crude. It's a bearish alert, crosses below the 200 day moving average. This is super important for me personally because I'm starting to trade crude and all that I watch intraday is price action and hopefully I'm on the trade with the OR breakout, the opening range breakout. So when an alert comes to me about crude, I'm paying attention to intraday. And this one happened to come to me intraday. I wasn't on the trade, but still watching and learning, of course. So the outlook is a four hour outlook, 65% lower, 35% higher. What happens to crude when it crosses below the 200 day moving average? Let's see the update. All right, it hit it in less than four hours, actually in 15 minutes. If you look at it, and this is so important to me for learning about the trade. So if you look at it, it hits it in less than the outlook, four hours, right? Just set it, no feedback. Doesn't cross back over, just hits it, hits the lower target, boom, done. Perfect, all right, so two days later, interesting enough, crude crosses below the 200 day moving average again. So what? Right, let's see how it does again. So two days later, I want to know how it behaves. Here's the alert. Same probability, 65% lower, 35% higher. You still have this targets, similar targets, the update. Well, look at this. It took it a little bit longer, about two and a half hours to reach the lower target. There was follow through, but if you look at it, there's a little bit of feedback. It crosses back above the 200, comes back, crosses back comes back and then hits the target. Okay, so I'm thinking to myself, the first time it hits, I take that trade. I possibly would add more risk. I feel good about the first time it hits the 200 day moving average. Second time, I still would play for sure. But then again, three days later, it hits crosses below the 200 day again, again. again. Right, so I wanted to show it again. The alert comes up, same hour outlook, same probability, same targets. 
Here's the update. Look at this update. Now it hit the target and it took it a little bit longer than the last one. So remember, 15 minutes in the first one, two and a half hours in the next one, the second time, third time, it's about three and a half hours. Okay, so this third time it hits it, I'm thinking I'm out. I wouldn't even touch this trade, right? So now if I'm also thinking in the back of my mind, would I ever automate this, a 200 day moving average on crude? Yes, if it crosses below the first time only, and then I'll point and click the second time. Interesting. Third time, I won't touch it. So here's the outlook, the update on the four hour outlook for when crude crosses below the 200 day moving average. Here's the best part. After you look at this third time, so today before we even came on, crude crossed above the 200 day and was up 1%. Oh my God, I would not touch this trade the third time round. I mean, Danny, great homework. And I wrote a few notes along the way. When you're trading new markets, and this goes to everybody, when you're trading new markets, look for confirmations, yeah. right? And what you did here is excellent because you took the 200-day moving average, which everybody looks at, we always talk about this, but right. followed up with statistics. And then you look to see how it reacted multiple times. So now you're building your book, your playbook, and you're saying to yourself, first time below with a momentum indicator, yep. that's a really high probability trade that it's going to get that target. Yep. I mean, so that's great homework. Another thing I wrote was reaction. You're not trading them right away. You're watching reactions. Yep. This is so important. Like I just said, building your playbook, using things like Red Sky and Wasable to help you understand how these markets are reacting. I mean, it's Great been work, a Danny. gift. Yeah, thank you. Great stuff this week, Danny. Thanks. Thank you so much. Next up in Beyond the Charts, Emily Click will discuss how craniosacral therapy can help you feel better in your body. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into the show. To learn more about the charts I use, Wasable Alerts, the basics of trading futures, and how you can even get funded to trade futures, please visit anthonycredelli.com. Now let me take you right back to trading futures. Welcome back everybody. Anne Marie is still with us and we are now joined by craniosacral therapist, Emily Click. Emily, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Anthony. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Tell us, how did you get involved in becoming a cranial sacral therapist? Well, many years ago, I was afflicted by this horrible condition that many people have called migraines that weren't affected by anything else, not medication or any other therapy. I tried one session of craniosacral therapy where I got on this table, this therapist put her hands on my head, then moved over, put her hands on my low back and sacrum. And I remember thinking, I don't hurt there, but that's okay. So, but within a few minutes, I could feel this clenching in my head disappearing and dissolving. And at the end of one session, the pain in my head went from a screaming migraine down to a slightly annoying headache, which was a huge improvement. And at that point, my mind was blown. I asked what that was, and she said that was craniosacral therapy. I signed up for my first class two weeks later. That was over 17 years ago. That's amazing. I know many traders that suffer from migraines and headaches. And I, yeah. this is the first time I'm even learning about this type of therapy. Talk to us a little bit about it. Uh, it's a form of light touch, hands-on adjustments that are very low velocity. That means they're very gentle and very slow. But make no mistake, just because they're slow and gentle doesn't mean they're not powerful in the effects that they can have. Uh, it's very common for my clients to feel a great improvement in their symptoms, whether it's pain, a lack of range of motion, or just feeling an intense sense of stress and anxiety where their life is closing in on them. And at the end of one session, they feel connected to their body, more comfortable in their body. Their pain is usually reduced greatly and a lot of other ways that they feel better, like maybe their sinuses are more open and they feel even taller and more aligned. As traders, we feel a lot of pain. And one mm -hmm. thing that I've noticed once I started getting more massages and, and things over the years is that our body hides pain. Yes. And mm -hmm. I thought I was feeling good but I really wasn't until I went into, started getting Reiki and massages mm -hmm. and found areas that I was kind of hiding pain. 
Why does our bodies hide pain and, and how does this therapy help it? You know, I wouldn't so much think of it as hiding pain as that you get used to it. It becomes a part of your normal. Where I hear so often someone says, on a normal day, I have aches and pains here. And I think, why does that have to be normal? So when the body, when we get used to it or when the body hides pain, then uh, you would go to see some kind of therapist who loosens up and, and mobilizes your connective tissue, realigns your joints and bones, even aligns the plates of the skull, which is what I do, and then they feel better. Where the pain that they didn't know that they have is so much reduced where I hear a lot, I didn't know I hurt there until you removed it. And that, that became, that was their normal. Amory, do you do anything to help you with, with any uh, of the pain maybe that you, that you have? I do. I get alignments fairly often, and uh, I do notice that. But for me, as a migraine sufferer and, of course, a technician, the first thing I think to myself as I'm listening to this is, wait, how is this actually happening? And you said something about aligning the, what did you just say about the, the plates of the skull? So that's mm -hmm. what's actually happening when you reduce the tension that allows that stuff to go away. That's, that's really, really fascinating. Well, if you think about it, if your head is compressed, mm -hmm. which can actually happen, then the brain and the central nervous system isn't able to function as effectively as possible. Absolutely. So by mobilizing these bones, what you're doing is opening up the brain to have better circulation and uh, better removal of waste product too. So a lot of people feel like they have more space in their head at the end of every session. And one thing I notice is that people's eyes look clearer at the end of every single session. Wow. I'm excited to do this therapy. Mm -hmm. I know. But I have to ask you a question. How much of the bones in the, are moving. I mean, how, how, how much, yeah. Are, are, are how much moving? movement? How much movement? Well, we're yeah. talking about a millimeter or two. I mean, it's not like I'm doing that much. However, when I've worked with babies uh, who have There's very soft room. skulls, yeah. and where the plates of their, their skull haven't grown together mm -hmm. because they have these soft right. spots, it can be common to see a, a radical change in the shape of a baby's skull at the end of one session. I am so fascinated by this. Yes. I'm really looking forward to, to doing a session. And talk to all the traders out there, because although maybe you're not physical, but as traders, we're spending a lot of mental energy. Absolutely. And I have, I have found that even when I'm not working yeah. out and I'll go for a massage, that, like I said, that pain is there. What is the first steps we should take to start looking into getting a therapist like yourself for this type of therapy? I would say you can Google craniosacral therapists near me. Uh, you can also go to the Upledger Institute's website and they have a link that says find a therapist where you can put in your zip code or your city and see the classes that various therapists have taken and you can look for someone who would be a good fit for you. And what I would say is with the massages and the acupuncture that you're already getting, don't change that. You know, it sounds like you have a great regimen going on, but what I would also say is why not add craniosacral therapy to it? Try one session and see how you feel within the next few days. Many people come to see me monthly for maintenance and then when things pick up in their life, for example, they have a huge stressor that comes up or maybe their job, traders, is very, very demanding on a daily basis, mm -hmm. maybe more maintenance like once every other week or once a week might be good. Um, and I would also say that, you know, being traders, you look at investments and you look for returns on those investments. So I would say it's worth it for your health to invest at least a few minutes a day and at least one session a week or every other week if, if one session is a week is too much. Um, find this time to get to invest in your health because if you don't, then uh, eventually something catastrophic will come along and we'll take that choice away from yeah. you. Great advice, yeah. invest in ourselves. Yeah. This was awesome. Now, before I let you go, for people that are in the Chicagoland area, where can they learn more about you? They can go to my webpage, emilyclickcst.com. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. Anne-Marie, you're the best. Thank you for joining Thank you. us. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. You can catch all of the episodes on anthonycardelli.com, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. See you next time.